Hi, everyone. I'm Tatsuro Ote from Chiba University in Japan. The title of my talk is Advancing Workflow Automation, Insights from Workflow Execution Service and the Common Workflow Language. This is a collaborative work with Hero from Seiru Inc. So first, um, I'd like to thank all my collaborators and colleagues in DDBJ and DBCLS and the colleagues in uh, the Chiba University and the biohackathon communities um, for their help on our project. And of course, I'd like to thank the whole CWO community. This is the CWO's 10th anniversary and I'm very happy to be a part of the party. So I'd like to start here. Um, what is the workflow execution service? I will introduce what it is for those who are not familiar with it and explain why and how we developed the OS. The workflow execution service or WES for short, is a so-called workflow as a service, a system that takes a workflow request and executes it. It is very similar to Galaxy, one of the most successful biomatics data analysis platforms, but WES is more workflow oriented. In biomatics, there is a well-known standard for WES, the API specification developed by the GA4GH for better interoperability between the WES. And GA4GH stands for the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. It is an international community dedicated to the international sharing of the human genomic data and has many working groups, um, including one on the cloud technologies. The Geo4GH cloud work stream has developed specifications for modules to be used in the cloud-based data analysis platforms. For example, uh, TRS to registry service and the WES, and also the, the test, which is the task execution service, and, all, and the DRS, there's data repository service. Therefore, sharing tools and the workloads and the data between the international organizations. So here's why we have developed OS. So we needed to automate the data processing as much as possible so that we can process data from those genome cohort projects. It also ensures the reproducibility, not only at the local level, but also with the machine environment. And most importantly, it allows for data visiting or the code to data approach, which allows for data sharing without moving the data out of storage, which can protect sensitive data, such as the human genome. And that is why we developed the OS and our implementation is called Sapporo. It is designed as a portable and lightweight system that supports multiple workflow languages, including CWL. We designed the system as simple as possible so we can use it as a component of a larger system. At the National Institute of Genetics in Japan, um, some data analysis applications use Sapporo as their backends. The basic use is quite simple, as you see here. 
you can clone our repository or fetch the Docker Compose manifest file and deploy the API server using just one line Docker Compose command. Then you can start sending the workload execution request to the server using the, the API standard uh, defined by the, the GA4GH cloud work stream. Here you, you will see that the, the workload URL and also what workload type CWL and the workload type version, engine name, and the parameters defined in the JSON file, and also the, the workload engine parameters also defined in the JSON file, which was passed to the, the RESTful API here. So what's inside support? This is a simplified diagram inside the support implementation. And above you can see the different workload communities uh, maintaining their workload corrections. And the support supports multiple workload engines so that users can choose an engine for the workload they want to run. Inside the API server here, there is a component called a run.shell, which is a simple and extensible shell script. So that this shell script has the different functions for each workload engine, and the users will choose one of them to run their workload. We also developed the, the GUIs to communicate with the, the REST API endpoint. And one of them, the support web is a generic dashboard for interacting with the REST endpoint, such as supporter. And another one, a NACL punch, is a system that can generate a UI for the given workload. These UIs have also the non-programmers to use the, the REST API. So you might ask, if you can submit any kind of the workload request, how can admins protect their servers? Like the, like the instance discovered here. For that purpose, we realize that a project or a community needs to maintain their own two repository. In our case, our infra infrastructure needs to have a workload repository that contains the workloads that we have approved to run on our system. So we developed a tool called Yebis, which is a toolkit for creating a tool registry service based entirely on GitHub and Zenodo. Users register a workload via a pull request on GitHub, and the repository automatically tests the, the workload using GitHub Actions. And this is what the, the repository built by Yevis looks like. And the repository will provide basic functionalities for the, the workload registries along with the TRS protocol, um, which is also developed by the GA4GH. As you can see here, the each workload will be, uh, will have the, the DOIs assigned by the Zenodo repository. And while developing a registry, we realize another problem so it is actually not enough to check the exit status of the, the workloads to say the workload is reproducible. So we need to compare two workload runs and check the workload logs and the output files to say that the two runs produced the exactly same results. So we developed another tool called Tonkatsu, which compares two workload logs recorded in the workload run crate developed by the research object community. 
So Sapporo creates a workflow runs in and the workload run crate. And the Tonkatsu compares two workload run crates to find the differences. Often biomatics tools generate files that are not identical at the file checksum level due to the random algorithm or the date, date time information in the file header or something like that. So users can set a cutoff value to distinguish the files that have access, acceptable or unacceptable differences. So let me summarize my talk so far. Um, Wes is for submitting a workload request to a remote server, and the Sapporo is one of the implementations. Yabis and Tonkatsu are the tools to improve the security and the reproducibility of the workloads that will run on OS. And then we believe that testing workloads is essential to optimize the performance of the OS. To conclude my talk, I'd like to talk about um, why we love CWL and the future of the biomatics workload from the data analysis automation perspective. CWL has many features that we love. It's deterministic nature and the YAML-based Percival format, and a CWL tools dash dash pack option is very strong with the WES implementations, as it packs the workloads into one file, making the workload truly portable. And the dash dash make template option and how it is possible are actually really amazing. And there are also other useful tools for 100 suitable workloads and the engines, such as the code gen function and also the Zatsu suitable generator. So let me briefly introduce this great tool developed by TomTom. Zatsu means sloppy in Japanese, and this tool may be sloppy but powerful. It produces the given command line to generate the suitable 2 definition. And here you can see the definition of the cat command to merge two files, but this would be a great starting point for writing the two definition. This is possible because the CWL specification is simple and machine friendly, which is perfect for the automation purpose. On the other hand, of course, there are also challenges when working with the CWL workloads. And the one thing we are facing now is the representation of the input parameters in the JSON schema, which is on, the, on its way to becoming part of the CW2. And some other issues like uh, inline JavaScript expression or secondary files can cause problems when we develop a system around the CW. But it is actually not a CW's fault. It is because of the behavior of the biomatics tools. So I hope the future biomatics tool developers realize they have to implement options to explicitly specify the input and the output files. So um, we believe that the, the CWL has a bright future um, because CWL may not be the best at handwriting, but it is the actually best at being read and written by machines. This means that CWL has a great potential for the use behind the system such as the West. CWL is possible format with provenance information will enable fully automated workload testing. And also um, machine learning technologies can also help advance CWL. Um, we are actually currently testing automa automatic validation and the generation of the CWL workloads by large language models. I hope that in the in the near future, there will be an engine written by the AI that passes the suitable conformance tests. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to take questions and enjoy the rest of the conference.